Michelle Dixie here coming to you from Spain on the Camino de Santiago. I just want to let y'all know that you're about to watch a pre-recorded version of a live Q&A that I did with my patrons through Patreon. We do these every so often just to kind of keep them updated on the journey as it's going on. But I do like to record them and post a lot of them on YouTube for the rest of the subscribers because I feel like there's usually some pretty good content in there especially if somebody's planning to hike the Camino in the future, or if you just wanna know more about the journey also. So I hope you enjoy. Keep in mind that this was streamed on Wi-Fi that might not have been perfect. So if it's not the typical video quality, that is why. Either way, I hope you enjoy. And if you wanna find out more about how to be involved in the next Q&A, you can find out in the video description below. We will see y'all later. Hi, John. Hey y'all, congrats on going international. Thank you. Yeah, we're officially here. We're actually here in Spain. What is the biggest unexpected surprise about this trail so far for each of you? I would say the first day, I didn't expect it to be so pretty. Uh, the, the, the first couple days were just like really mountainous and really pretty. Um, so I just, I didn't, I wasn't expecting that. Also, I knew it would be crowded, but I didn't know it would be like having to book places to sleep ahead of time crowded. So that was, that was a surprise. Honestly, for some reason, I thought this was supposed to be the off season, but apparently the summer is the off season. So there was that for me. I think one major one for me was like, you know, I know a few people are gonna speak English, but like we were struggling, of course, with the language barrier. Um, and like, I don't know, being able to talk to people like that, they would say bonjour at first. When we got there, we first started the trail and they were just, you know, we would say it back and then they'd be like, oh, do you speak English? Yep, we do. Or they would and, know. Or, yeah. Yeah, they would just start speaking in English. Like, what yeah, can we I get for you? And I'm like, we were told that we look like we Americans. We look American. So, look I like guess American that's how girls. they know, but I don't, I don't know. What is the hiker trash culture like there? Similar to USA Trails or different? Um, really so, good. it's not. People, like, you're it's expected, you're, you're expected to smell, like, decent. You're expected to to bathe because you can take a shower every day and we wash our clothes at night or the, like the clothes that we hiked in most of the time unless they're not gross we might wear them two days in a row um yeah we wore them it was like four four miles yeah and, and then we just wore them like, in the next day so we'll wash them out by hand hang them up to dry and then the next day put them on and I, even if they're a little damp and cold still you're getting out to start walking it's just it's not that bad and you're starting off in a warm place not in the comfort of your sleeping bag you know in your mm. tent where the tent is cold so it's it's not too bad putting on something damp in the morning here um it's nice being able to be clean but at the same time it's kind of a pain in the butt being expected to be clean in my opinion because i don't know when i get to camp at night i don't have to stress over oh no i gotta wash my clothes out you know so um now the interesting thing, we could have brought like several pairs of clothing um, and then had everything transported from village to village because they do have a transport service. So say you're you know, not capable of carrying that like much weight at all on your back. This is definitely a trail that you could do because uh, you can, there are services that'll carry your stuff from one place to another. Um, or if you just didn't want to, but um, you know, it's of course at a cost, so I think Five Didn't somebody euro. say about five euro per town? Or I think it, yeah, it's like five to seven euros, okay. something like that. Yeah. I so, thought I saw somewhere that it said 10, but I was like... But I just wouldn't even want to, well, one, pay the money, and then two, um, fool with, like, get into town, and I guess as I'm long as you know in. where you're going to stay, and they deliver it to that place, then that would be convenient. But if you didn't know where you were going to stay, then apparently they have, like, a central location in town, they'll drop it off, and you got to go get it, and all that. Um, so I guess if you were going to have your luggage carried from place to place, I would recommend just booking things ahead of time. But that gets a little sketchy because then if you end up in a situation like Montana where uh, your feet are hurting and you don't want to go that far, or maybe you just really feel fired up and you want to go farther, you know, that kind of puts you in a bind. But just an option that exists so that y'all know. Um, bathing every day, it sounds like it would make a nice change from eight plus days of stinky. I know, it, it does, but <laughs> when you get used to being stinky, Bathing every day is almost a pain in the butt, but I do appreciate the food. Montana has been calling me big girl because I've been eating like I've got for real high. She has. Like I'm been doing 30 big miles girl. per day. I think I'm probably um, gonna gain weight. <laughs> this trail. Yeah, other sister eats like little snacks like here and there. 
Big girl over here. <laughs> I've been Neutral starving. Man. I've been starving, and it's good. They feed you on, on these at these albergues, the pilgrim meals. Ooh, they, they do a full like, course. Yeah, like we do soup <sighs> and bread and wine. And I love that they give you usually one glass and there's water and wine and you have to choose <laughs> priorities. And then um, soup and then your then main course and then dessert. and then dessert. How are y'all getting along so far? Barely. Oh, please. <laughs> We've been fine. No, we yeah, we've been mostly fine. Mm -hmm. Except for when she doesn't have her coffee. Yeah. I've, You've had a lot of coffee, though. I've had a lot of coffee. It's and been nice. There's yeah. coffee along the way at stop. We both get hangry. Yeah. I got hangry earlier. I was okay. getting I just got quiet life. when you got hangry. I was like, I'm just going to. I know. I, like I was like, she, I was I'm like, like she knows. I'm trying so hard. I'm trying. Gonna, I know. Because I know I get hangry. And the best thing that somebody can do when I'm hangry is not say, geez, you're hangry. And just like, yes, just be quiet. So I was like, okay, we come, we're cut from it's the same like, cloth. So yeah, it's just like, you know, exactly when someone's hangry and you're just like, shut up. Oh, mom, uh, mom gets to bump ahead just cause she's, she made us, but hey girls, lots of love from good old good Alabama. Old we love you mom. Did you end up taking sleeping bags or just the liners? We did end up with the sleeping bags and there have been a couple of nights where I'm pretty grateful for that. It's just, I think it's cooler this time of year than most people expect. Plus, I'm very cold natured. So, or have you been glad to have more oh, than a yeah, liner? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And she's not as cold natured as I am. But I, now I wouldn't say anything like a 10 degree is necessary. I mean, even like a 40 degree would be fine. Um, I mean, mine, mine's a 30. Mine's I, I could 30. probably do without it, but even when I'm like, burning up in my room at the house like I got the fan going I have to have covers yeah like something to be pulled over yeah. me that's like kind of fluffy right and, yeah I, so. I like there have been some nights where I was cold until I got in that so yeah um sure. it the 30 degree is probably a little overkill but um a, a warmer rated sleeping bag but I'm glad that I have that so for sure have you had issues with bed bugs oh not yet knock on wood um not well, there you go. <laughs> Logan says, finally got signed on. How many miles or kilometers are you going to be doing per day? You may be answering that now. We uh, we need to, we need to do eventually at some point, like 15. But right now we've been doing, what, 9 to 10? Yeah. Yeah. Except the little days that we've had where we stopped because you're, the one day that we stopped because we had your feet. Or like the zeros. But like on the days, well, in Orson. But most of the days... If we, if it's not like five or 15, <laughs> then we've done um, like 10. Dixie, Montana, any trail name yet? No. Nope. Not yet. I don't know that they even do trail names here. I'm just gonna have to give you one anyway. No, how about Montana? I like that one. No, okay. Mom gave you that. Um, let's see, trail names are not a European thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, but I, I kind of figured after being out here. Posting Montana's gear list. I need to post that. I do need to. Okay. Um, um, I don't have a scale to weigh it, but. I don't have. I have pretty much the same She thing. has a HMG pack, uh, the Southwest 2400. So cute. And she has um, basically the same clothing selection as I do. Sadly. Uh, <laughs> and she has everything else is is pretty similar. Um, rain gear, she's got. Except I have an umbrella. Yeah, she has an umbrella. I didn't bring an umbrella. I started to, and then I mm. left it. But because I was trying to think, wait, I, I had a million know. pounds of camera stuff. Hello from Georgia, home of the dogs. Alaska, New Zealand, Hawaii. How do you compare ATPC, ATPCT, CDT to the trail you are on now? Um, Okay, well, it's nothing alike. <laughs> uh, with this one, you're always near a road, which I guess you could say in a way is similar to the AT, but that's not always true. Um, there are a ton of people out here. Um, it's pretty much for us, like there have been hostels everywhere to stay in. So that's not always true on those trails because sometimes you have to get a motel or a hotel or camp in town. 
um, because there isn't a hostel option. So, um, other than that, there is food all the time, everywhere, every day. You don't have to cook. We haven't had to filter water. You could carry a filter and there are some streams and stuff along the way, but um, that's just one less thing to carry and one less thing to fool with. So we've just carried bladders each, um, like the platypus bladders with the hydration tube and the little bite valve. And so we've been doing that. They have water fountains along the way that you can fill up, but the water fountains are cool. They're like, like ancient looking with a like, button you push and they squirt out water out of a little fountain yeah. thing and I don't know it's cool um they just look fancy like, everything I looks like, fancy I feel like I shouldn't be drinking that water because I can't like you're not good enough for yeah. it yeah yeah it's weird um and this is more uh, obviously the Appalachian Trail is has culture and history I mean all of them do um but this one has a lot of culture that I'm sure is just flying right over our heads that we don't even, you know, can't even appreciate. But the architecture, just everything is so um, elaborate and, and pretty. So anyway, uh, we're not camping in a tent. Um, we're staying in, in town. So we're just walking village to village. And so far, um, there hasn't been anything that's been bigger than it's just like pilgrim villages it's almost built up because of the Camino um, so it's not been just a big town like Pamplona until now and I and I feel like a lot of it along the way won't be that way so it's funny because no it's not as wild as those triple crown trails in the US however the the towns so far that we've seen the villages are smaller than the towns that you go through on those trails so I don't know, it kind of balances out in a way, I guess. But um, there are a lot of differences, but this one is certainly more civilized, if you will. Um, but it's just more of a mixture of like history and, and culture and nature than just more, uh, th than just being as much wilderness. So far on this trip, what activity or experience has your sister had that was most enjoyable and rewarding for you to witness? Oh, I have mine. I'll go first. I have two. Is that okay? Do I get two? I'm gonna get two. Okay, the first one that I think of was, okay, so our second day, it had been <laughs> raining all day the second day, all day. It was cold and like windy and the cold wind was cutting our faces and stuff. And I just said to Montana, man, I can't wait to be, or I, I, it would be wonderful if there just was a magical shelter that appeared that we could get out of the rain for a little while. And then suddenly there was this wonderful food truck that appeared and had a little canopy thing, a little awning so we could stand up under it. And they had hot chocolate. And Montana had the biggest genuine smile I think I've ever seen on her face because she was holding a cup of hot chocolate and thawing her hands out. So that was the first one, that, that was just like, she seemed very, very happy. The hot chocolate was the best hot chocolate I've ever had. Yes, in but my life. just and to see was... her cut down and so miserable and then like so excited about hot chocolate, I was like, yes. Um, not that I want to see you miserable, but it's just the point yeah. of you were. Yeah. And then, okay, mm. so that's probably my favorite picture of Montana now, which I will share with y'all in Please an update. Don't. I know, they gotta see it. Okay, and so then the second thing was when it was just funny because we had to at Orison go around and say our names and where we were from and why, like why we were doing the Camino. And so I stood up, it came around to me first and I said that I was <clears throat> walking with my sister and um, we were excited about being on a trail. Well, I was excited about being on a trail where I could go to the bathroom in a toilet and not have to dig a hole. And so I knew that my sister wouldn't even be up for digging holes versus toilets. So this was something that we could do together and that she could see, you know, something different than Alabama. And mm -hmm. so when I got around to her, oh, and I said, and the way I got her to agree to it was, you know, I told her there'd be wine or whatever. So I got around to her and then uh, she stood up and she said, I'm Montana from Alabama. <laughs> and everybody died laughing. Everybody that even speaks different that languages. so sad. Yeah, and so just to see, like, she just turned red and then sat down. Y'all see And it. everyone was like, so no, quick. get back up, get back up, get back. So she stood back up and she's like, I'm doing it for the wine. And then sat back down. It was yeah. like she was going to say something. No, I was More deep be, or whatever. But. Yeah, it was. 
it was gonna be totally different. And then I was like, well, now that y'all have made me all red and upset, <laughs> I'm doing it. Where's for the, the wine? So just to see her stand up in front of everybody and then like be embarrassed, but then like get back up and I don't know, because you could have just sat down and refused to get up, but you didn't. But then also just how tough she is, like overcoming this this pain mm -hmm. she's having in her feet and stuff. So yeah. I guess just um, when we were at Orison. And she went to the bathroom and got to flush the toilet. And she came back <laughs> and she was like, we got to flush the toilet. I was so excited. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that you is know, pretty I, exciting. I flush them all the time. Yeah, but. I know. But when you don't, and when you have to like, when you don't ring the hole and then you got to scrape it off into the hole, you know, you don't you don't have to do yeah, any of that. So yeah, yeah, I didn't have to deal with that. Question for both of you. How uh -huh. has your perception of the world changed since this trip to, since this trip began? Oh. Mm. Well, you want to go first on this one or you want me to go first? You got it. Okay, so my perception is I am an ignorant fool for not being able to speak more than one language. That's exactly what I, yes. my, that was my first thought. Yes. Um, I mean, I just, I, it's a strange feeling being in a place where all the, well, most of the conversations happening around you are not in your language. and. To almost, I, I just don't want anyone to think that I expect them to cater to me and speak my language. So it's like I want to try. It's just I, I don't know. And so I have a lot more respect for people who do speak two languages and for people who, when, because I've had people apologize to me for like, oh, I'm sorry for my broken English. And I'm like, you're speaking English, you know? So for somebody to apologize or to feel embarrassed, because they don't speak well, I just, it just blows my mind. I'm like, no, this is awesome. Like, you're actually communicating with me in this language. And not just like pieces, but actually having a conversation. Because for us, uh, you know, I go up to the counter and I can order something off the menu uh, in Spanish. And and I don't always have to have the app to, to translate words when I'm reading the menu. Sometimes I do. Um, but, but there are words that, I don't know, I do recognize. There are words that are similar to to ours, I don't. I saw a sign the other day that said something about cannabis. Um, uh, what did it say? Cannabis affects your brain, but it was like whatever cannabis is in Spanish. Maybe it was just cannabis. Um, and then I think affecto, and then something about it was the the root word was like the cerebral, you know, something like that. So so I could read what it said, um, but it was just. I, don't know. I can't just go and speak those but words to But if you somebody. had the English phrase and you had to write down on a piece of paper what that would be in Spanish, you would be like, I'd be like, I can't. Not all of it, but some of it. And then a girl sat by me on the bus the other day and she was like, Chabajo, you know, talking about working and mañana and noches. And so some of those words I was picking up on, um, but the rest of the conversation. So uh, anyway, I just admire, I guess my biggest thing that has changed is I really admire people who can speak broken English, uh, and especially the ones the other night introducing themselves at Orson, the fact that they stood up and everybody except for one man spoke in English. And that one man, I think he said a couple of words, but then he was having he somebody did. translate for him. And yeah, this lady next to him stood up. Yeah, like, oh. um, so I, I don't know, the fact that all those people were able to do that, I'm like, wow, I feel dumb. How different is the hike in a bubble of pilgrims that you keep finding at towns and albergues? Do you like it or it is somewhat overwhelming to be among other hikers all the time? I would say for me, it's been a bit overwhelming, but Montana was like, where are people the first place we yeah. stayed? She's like, I want people to stay with us. So I, want, I think she's liked it. I, I mean, I like, I like, you know, talking to different people, but like, I don't know, it's just been fun like asking them their stories and seeing yeah. like what all they've seen and yeah. how the p places they've stayed is different from where we have. Yeah. And like how their experience has been. So, yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool. And there's a bunch of people that are even like from the United States or right. New Zealand, like all over the place. So you get to hear their accents yeah. against yours. And so, you know, you're not so different. Yeah, I've noticed I feel like I speak with less of an accent when I talk to people. I don't I don't even think, I think it's on purpose, but I don't realize that I'm doing it on purpose, but I get tired of repeating myself because I know there have been a few times where you've said words and I'm like, that person's about to ask her what she just I said. Know. And then I'll be I like, she said it. ice. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> instead of asked. But I, I've just so many times I have to repeat myself that I think I've learned, okay, if I'm not talking with somebody that's from the U.S. and I have to, and it's weird. When when it's their second language, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even sometimes people from other parts of the U.S. are like, what? I, I was out in California and I asked people if they had found my knife and they were like, a knife? And I was like, knife. It's been a little bit overwhelming for me just logistically going, okay, I don't want the place to be booked before we get there. And we're slow going and we don't like to get up super early. You know, this for me was not a, oh, let's wake up at the butt crack of dawn and race to the next place so that we don't have no place to stay tonight or whatever, or have to taxi to the next village. Um, but so like we've, we've kind of planned room. ahead, you know, each night, but even still, some of the places are like, if you're not here by three, your re reservation is given up. And I hate that. Cause I just want to walk until you know and just really soak it in so it's been a little it's been a little stressful at times I've thought maybe we would have been better off doing like the Norte or, or a different route but but I'm glad I'm glad that we're doing this one uh how is the Garmin GPS in reach working out overseas I noticed in one of your posts where a diagram was posted with elevation over distance change did that come from your GPS or somewhere else that came from gut hook the app gut hook um the Camino is in gut hook so um, at least the French way. I'm not sure what other ones are in there, but no, I actually didn't bring my inReach. Now our goal was to bring one of these SpyTech STIGL 300 MA. This is like your spouse is cheating and you put a tracker <laughs> in their vehicle, <laughs> um, and it and it worked great in Boston. So then we get over here with them because I just wanted. I, I don't worry about myself as much, but then I think about Montana and I'm like, if somebody snatches her up, I want a way to go track her down and to um, castrate the person that stole her. Anyway, um, okay. so I uh, got these so that we could keep in our fanny packs or you know on our person to track us um, in case something terrible happened. And then also if, if we didn't have Wi-Fi for a couple of days, our parents could see like, okay, they're still moving along and everything's you know, good and, and, and whatever, um, just to reduce worrying. Now we get over here and they quit working. So I contact the company and they're like, Oh, Oh, sorry. You have to turn on roaming with those devices. And I've paid 25 bucks a piece, I think for the tracking service. Um, and so I said, okay, well, we'd like to turn on the roaming then. And they say, okay, no charge, no charge. Yeah, whatever. And then after a day or two, I hear back, oh, those devices aren't roaming capable for overseas. So we'll trade out your devices. And I was like, by the time you send them here to a place, well, they wouldn't send them here. They were gonna send them to my mom who was gonna mail them to us. So by the time they send them to her and then she sent them to us, I mean, it'd just be a while into the trip and, and almost kind of pointless, but they would exchange them for free. So I was like, okay, so then I get a notification from, from them. Oh, we've sent them to your mother's address, um, but we have to receive these within, it was like 10 days from the shipping label date that they sent to my mom's. And I'm like, it's impossible for me. At first I have to hike to a town that has a post office in Spain, and then I have to mail them, and who knows how long it's gonna take from them to get to Spain to the US, and then from where my mom is to you. I'm sorry, I'm fired up. And so I told them that they could take these and shove them where the sun doesn't shine. I was actually nice about it. Um, but I told them that we would no longer be needing their services and they refunded me the cost of the services. And um, so now I guess if these can make it back to mom in time, then maybe we can return them on Amazon. So anyway, they're in this little baggie because there's a post office here. So we're gonna send them tomorrow. Um, so that was just pretty much a waste of life. Mom, so. all of this in the bag is going. Just so you know. Yes. Um, all right. So it's not worked out. Um, I, and I don't know how the inReach would work. Honestly, I wish that I had just brought the inReach. So there you go. I saw the picture of boots and most seem to be hiking boots rather than ultra trail runners. Is that the case? Yeah, a lot of people do have hiking boots, but I'm going to go with that's unnecessary. Um, honestly, uh, of all the trails I've done, um, I, I I, and I don't mean that to sound snobby, if that just sounds snobby, but like, I, I guess this trail, certainly I don't think boots are necessary unless you have truly problematic ankles that you must have ankle support for. It's just, I, I mean, there have been a little places where it's gravelly and stuff like that, but 
Um, I, I think that it's just a, that same mindset of like, oh, I'm going hiking, so I must have hiking boots. But have you felt like you needed boots or like you wanted boots? No. Yeah. So I just feel like that's going to be too hot for my feet. Anyways. Yeah. And like heavy and I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is the case. A lot of people have had boots. Um, we realized that but, the other day. Yeah. Curious to know how the town to town beaten path that always ends having to find an albergue with free beds compares to the freedom of just planting tent wherever. <sighs> yes, if I could do this trail in a time where I didn't have to stress over getting an albergue, like I would rather have the heat of summer, like full blown summer, than to stress over the albergue thing. So yes, there is something to be said for freedom and being able to just throw down wherever you want to and giving up comforts for that, for sure. How religious is the trail? How much do people talk about religion on trail? I haven't heard they about don't. I haven't heard anybody. Now I'm sure that there are clusters of people who do um, talk about it. I can tell you, um, yeah, I mean, like there hasn't been any body. I, I don't even know that I've talked to anybody that's been to mass or anything like that. But now we did stay at a, a monastery type place that was, um, they were singing very early in the morning. Like uh, Bronson. Yeah, Ronses Baez. Yeah, um, and it was mm. what? Uh, what time did they start? At five forty-five. Like four. Or something. It was. <laughs> I was and I was like, like "What is wrong with Catholic folks? Why did they get up this early to sing as if they're happy, like little birds in the morning?" Um, being my grumpy self, but but it was it was actually really pretty. And if I had to pick my alarm clock, the way that it goes off, or hearing those beautiful voices in the morning, well, I'd pick those voices, I guess. But. Uh, yeah, it's been, I, I just, I'm not an early riser for sure. And on this, no. and on this staying in the bunk rooms, it's kind of like shelters on the AT. You're an early riser to some extent, whether you want to be or not, because people are early risers and they're going to get up and you're going to be, you know, woken up. Thomas says, so based on your experiences so far, does either of you see a second European trip in your future? Oh, for sure. That's a yes for me. <laughs> yes, we'll be for sure. boat, but yes. Oh, come on. You're a pro at flying now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Buen Camino, ladies. Montana, I think it's really cool how brave you are for mm -hmm. flying and going international for your first big hike. Yes, yeah, seriously. Round of applause yeah, thank you. to thank Montana you. for that. Uh, not struggle. many would be that adventurous right out of the gate, for real. Like, I was nervous about being over here, and I've done other hikes. So, yeah, to be hiking for the first time and going to another country, that is that is actually, I'm actually kind of impressed with you. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I That plane ride was awful. Yeah. I was shaking. No, she was crying the on, the, on the first one. I'm sorry, you were. I know. Okay. I'm going to start crying again thinking about Stop. it. Stop. I don't want to. We have to, to go back. Up. I recommend doing Camino in October. Still plenty of people to talk to, but always got to bed in the first place. The wine fountain was turned off, though. Ah, don't tell her that. If the wine fountain's turned off, how are you going to react? I'm quitting. <laughs> Because the wine fountain is not at the end. That's all that matters, Quit. guys. Quit. You are not quitting. Um, okay, I am I will quitting. say that it so seems like, yeah, I've read that some albergues close mid-October also. So that, I, I assume, would be something to consider. But, again, I'm not I'm not the all-knowing Camino person. So I'm learning. I'm learning, learning. Thank you all for being here and uh, for joining us tonight. And as soon as I get... Um, any kind of decent Wi-Fi or a SIM card that I feel like will do well on this tower service, then we'll do another one of these. So, um, because, because I like them.